A new radio from Radtel, one they sent me. They saw my last video that I did with the RT-490. And they're like, hey, we want to send you our RT-470, which is a tri-band, 2 meters, 220, and 440 for ham radio. And so far, I just keyed up a 220 repeater, and I threw my call sign out just to kind of see what was going on, just to see if this thing would even key up. And someone came back to me, and we held a one-minute QSO. So we're going to check out this radio today. So, special shout out to Radtel for sending me this radio. Again, this is the RT-470X Tri-Band. And if you go over here to Amazon, I didn't realize it was a Tri-Band. They said they wanted to send me the RT-470. I said, sure, that's fine. If it's a Radtel radio, people will probably be interested in it because my last video did really well. But right now, you can get this radio for about 30 bucks on Amazon. It's $32.99, and it currently has a coupon. Apply a $3 coupon right here. So you can get it for $29.99 right now. So tri-band radio for $29.99. That's pretty cool right there. It's got a really large, clean-looking display, black background with white text. So the dark mode, as we commonly called it. So that's the currently the current popular thing. And um, preliminary tests with this thing have done really well. So I want to show it to you guys right now. And then I would like to put it onto the tiny SA. So we're going to do that as well. All right, this is the radio itself. If I put this in here, it makes everything dark because the sensor on the camera <laughs> sees the white. So it does come with a manual. It's a decent manual. I kind of thumbed through it for a minute, but I didn't really, I didn't really read much on it. Here's the radio itself. It's got the push to talk over here. This turns on the FM radio receiver like that. Okay. It does also, this also does do airband receive. I forgot to mention that a minute ago. This does something, but I don't know what because I keep pushing the button and I hear it, but... Okay, so you long press that and holds the squelch open. Good. All right, here's the ports over here. A standard Kenwood K-type connector, that kind of thing. Now, what I did was I programmed my 220... This is the 220 Louisville repeater. I programmed that in. I set the CTCSS tone. Menu. And I thought this was a little bit weird. Right now, it shows the dot next to the 110, but the, the 114.9 underneath it is flashing, and it's hard to tell which one is actually selected. So you got to make sure you select the right one. The one in the red is, is what's, what's selected. So if I wanted to change it, and then the dot moves to the 114.9, now the 110.9 is flashing, and now 110.9 is selected. So most repeaters in this area are 110.9. So I, I was able to key that repeater up a minute ago. It's got all of these menus to go through here. You can turn this beep off. It's got a Roger beep. Hey, so that makes it official. It's got a Roger beep. But you can turn this beep off when I press the buttons. You could turn the voice off right there. Those of you who are, uh, I often get blind hams asking me which um, radios will talk to you. This one has voice prompt on it. So it's got these languages in here. Busy channel lockout. Programmable PF two and three buttons top key is light or no weather okay so the top key is currently set to no weather so i can go here on. and it brings up no weather stations conditions are expected to be favorable for British. there we go so you can change that on. to the flashlight turn the flashlight on if you want to with that top button now the station i just had a conversation it was a very short conversation but he came back to me he's like you're really scratching into the repeater you're making it but you're frying bacon so there's somebody monitoring that repeater. Okay, thank you for the comeback. I appreciate it. I'm just on an HT inside the house, so I'm, I'm kind of surprised I'm keen at it all. Thank you for coming back to me. KC5 HWB. And there you go. I'm pretty sure that's the same station I talked to just like a, a couple minutes before I hit hit go on the repeat on the uh, on the video. But it's a tri-band. It works great on 220. That repeater is probably as the crow flies. I don't know, five, seven miles from me, something like that. I'm not sure exactly where it is in the city of Louisville, but the city of Louisville is a bit north of me, and it's probably five, seven miles to the border of Louisville, you know, straight line of sight, straight as the crow flies. So I want to put this thing, I like the size of it. The battery on the back has a connection for the belt clip, so you don't put the belt clip on the radio itself, you put it on the battery. That's good and bad. If you want to get a second battery, you're going to have to get a second belt clip. That's the reason I don't like it, but you can do it either way. But this one has the, whether you like it or not, this one has the belt clip on the battery. The battery is USB-C rechargeable. 
Comes with a wall wart and a USB-C cable. Does not come with a desktop charger, although it looks like you could probably add one later to it because it looks like this battery would take a desktop charger, but it's USB-C rechargeable. So like many of these radios, it's going to USB-C charging and that's always a good thing. So let's put this thing on the tiny SA and see what we can find. Also, I should mention, I should have mentioned this up front actually. It comes with a dual band antenna. Okay, if you read the, the writing, the very small writing on the inside of this antenna, it says 136 to 174 and 400 to 480. So the fact that I was able to key up that 220 repeater with a non-220 antenna, probably not too good for the radio. Honestly, I was just kind of seeing if it would, would even key in 220. Sometimes I put I put in 223.500, which is the simplex calling frequency. I put that in and it came back. So I'm like, okay, see what this looks like. I wonder how well, how much better it would work to put an actual 220 or tri-band antenna on it. The Nagoya NA771 is a good tri-band antenna. I have that on my TYT TH350 radio and it's it, it's tall so it makes the radio a little bit cumbersome if you want to set it on the on the desk because the antenna is tall so it's a lot heavier than the stock antenna but it does work well if you want to do tri-band if you want to do all three bands all right let's bring this over here and i'm going to set this is a 5 watt ht okay i haven't actually done power tests on it it claims to be a 5 watt ht i find that um these these hts that claim to be like 10 or 15 watts usually don't add up but the 5 watts usually do i still want to change it down on low power transmit power okay so it has high middle and low so it's got three power settings so I'm gonna do it on middle power because this is a 10 watt 40 DB attenuator for the tiny SA so we're gonna do it there first and I'm gonna go to I'm gonna turn my offset off frequency direction is now off come out of that 224.54 we're going to go right here. That, and now we're going to key up right there. We'll let it run for a minute because sometimes you got to do that. So this is the negative 40 line right here. It is it's got a third harmonic that well, it just disappeared. It's got a second harmonic around right there. And that's dropping down as you get as you hold the key down longer and that's all disappeared now that's not terrible it's not terrible it had a second harmonic come up there presumably around like the 550 540 type uh, or no 48 480 i'm sorry 480 or 440 megahertz somewhere in there 224 times two is the second harmonic but that's not bad right there it's not terrible there it goes okay so once you get it keyed down all right good it's should it should not show anything above negative 40 db but it is okay so 146 okay 146 520 we're going to change this now uh now we're still on middle power yeah m for middle right there so i'm going to key that up here you see there's four or five harmonics come up almost immediately, but after holding the key down for a while, we're going to see what it looks like. So that second harmonic is no good. That second harmonic is around 293. Fourth harmonic's at 439. Okay, so this is really, this is splattering on, on two meters. This is, uh, this is the zero line right here. All of these are at zero, or just above zero. This, this second harmonic's at plus 20, and the, the 146.5 frequency is at plus 30. So that's a very dirty signal on two meters. Not a very good signal at all on two meters. Now, let me explain that to you. Some people come along, they're like, nobody cares about spurious emissions. Well, you should. You should care about spurious emissions for, for about three reasons. Number one, if you're a good ham radio operator, you should want to use clean equipment. Okay, and the reason I test a lot of these radios is because I, I want to know if the equipment is clean or not. I got a request the other day to do my VX6R from Yezu tri-band radio and see how clean it is so i'm going to do that uh, because one of you guys in the comment section of another video requested that you want to transmit clean power okay number two the second reason is you might interfere with something of your own if the radio is transmitting on multiple frequencies at the same time it could interfere with uh, stereo reception weather 
radio reception. It can interfere with small electronics devices. It can interfere with all kinds of things. Granted, on a 5 watt HT, you're going to have to either get pretty close to it. It's going to have to be a pretty poorly shielded device for it to interfere, but it's possible. And number three is if you're trying to hide from somebody and you're transmitting on a radio that's transmitting on two or three frequencies at the same time, it's going to be easier for them to find you because instead of just transmitting on the one frequency you're talking on, okay, if you're trying to bug out in the woods somewhere, you're trying to communicate with somebody, but you don't want anyone to know exactly where you are, if you have a radio that transmits where it's supposed to, it's going to be much more difficult to find you than a radio that transmits on three or four different frequencies all at the same time and splatters all over the band. So that's why you don't want spurious emissions. It is it a big deal? It should be if you're a ham radio operator. If you're not a ham radio operator, if you're just kind of lo uh, looking around or testing the waters, if you're using cheap Chinese GMRS HTs, then okay, whatever, that's fine. That is why we like to use clean, clear radios that are better quality than some of this stuff that's just off the shelf off of Amazon. So speaking of why you would want spurious emissions to be clean, that is something you will learn. You'll learn about emissions and learn about bandwidths and how things get affected once you get your ham radio license. And if you're interested in doing that, I highly recommend to go over to hamradioprep.com. You can use the coupon code of Jason20 to receive a 20% discount on all of their courses. You can get technician, which is their first level of license. General is the second level and extra is the third level. You can buy them individually or you can combine them together in an existing package deal that they already have and still use the coupon code of Jason20 to get 20% off. Download their app on your smartphone, iOS or Android for free. Get started today for free with their app from Ham Radio Prep and thank them when you see them, if you talk to them, thank them for sponsoring this channel. All right, last band, we will test uh, 441.0. I suspect 440 is probably going to look good. Most of these radios that have um, splatter all over two meters look pretty good on the other bands. And now we're going to key up 440. Okay, it's got a second harmonic right here. It's got someone way up here, something way up here, but it's pretty much at the mark where it's supposed to be. It's at like negative 25 right now. There's a second harmonic right here around 880 megahertz. That is at negative 10. But you know what? After you key it down a while, it tends to go away. So yeah, just went away there. This 8th harmonic tends to be... I've, I've measured a lot of radios in the 440 band. This 8th harmonic tends to always be here. It's not here when I'm not keyed up. If I unkey, it goes away. Wait for it. There it goes. So the first one, and every, everything's gone away now. It's reading something right here, but not much. But that 8th harmonic's gone away. So, so it's a little dirty even on 440. Not the cleanest 440 radio that I've ever seen. And... Actually, I think it was cleaner on two meters than it was on, or on 220 than it was on anything else. But for 30 bucks, I don't know. Some of you are going to comment that we should never use radios that are this dirty, and I agree with that standpoint. Others are, of you are going to comment about who cares? It's a $30 radio, nobody cares. Well, people do care, but if you don't care, then you know there's nothing stopping you from using it. Amazon's selling it; it's out there. You can get it. Uh, for 30 bucks, it's a good entry level into ham radio. But I would suggest that if you get something like this as your first radio, that you upgrade to something that with a cleaner signal later on, after you've kind of gotten used to the hobby, gotten used to being on repeaters, and gotten used to talking to people, you're going to have a cleaner audio signal into a repeater with a $150 radio or a $300 radio than you will with a $30 radio. And as far as the receive sensitiv sensitivity that comes back to you, the quality of audio that comes back to you, if you're talking to someone, you're listening to a repeater or you're listening to uh, FM Simplex somewhere, the audio quality coming back to you is also going to be better on a more expensive radio than this. But this, the, these Radtail radios are decent. They're decent starter radios. A little bit clean, unclean signals, but uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you have this radio. And if you don't have this one, if you have a tri-band radio, I'd like to know what model you have there. 73.